Hello, welcome everybody to my presentation. My name is Jesse Jones and my capstone project is called the Next Cloud Pod. So let's get started. The Next Cloud Pod is an inexpensive storage solution using an open source cloud software system. And the idea is to basically create and maintain your own cloud storage and also employ RAID 1 mirroring using SSD drives or thumb drives or hard drives so you can have that backup failure redundancy. And also with this being in the cloud, that means you should be able to access the data anywhere via your phone, for example. So my project is actually a proof of concept. I'm using a little bit older uh, Raspberry Pi A and uh, USB drives to keep the cost down. Uh, in the future, though, it would be nice to use uh, Raspberry Pi 4s and maybe larger SSDs, which we'll get into. So first, uh, this is built on the Raspberry Pi platform. So here's the my model, the Raspberry Pi 3A, which is a fairly powerful little computer for 30 35 dollars selling it by itself um, this down here is a little bit better model the raspberry pi 4 uh, the big difference is, uh, is the um, you have dual band or uh, wireless so you can use the gigahertz 5 gigahertz a little bit faster processor uh, gigabit internet and um, 3.0 usb which is really when you're talking about the way you probably want to run storage is running it through USB to external SSDs or thumb drives. So that, that 3.0 USB would definitely make the bigger difference. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. So this is what I, kind of like an average starter kit will run online. Uh, this is similar to my kit. Uh, you get a board, a little fan, heat sinks, uh, your SD card to put the uh, Raspbian software on, and you can get like a nice little case. So this is kind of everything you would need if you want to start almost any Raspberry Pi project, especially this one. So the next component of this project is the open source software, which is I'm using utilizing Nextcloud. And uh, when I found out about Nextcloud, I thought it was a pretty interesting free software. Uh, what, but what it is is it's a suite of uh, client server software for creating and hosting file services. So basically, it's your own personal file system that's on a cloud, and you can install it on any of your own personal computing devices, a Raspberry Pi, your home computer, uh, a VM if you're running vCenter. But it's a, a nice little tool for um, for a file share system. If you want to save documents, photos, notes, videos, and access them anywhere. So why I chose to do this project? I find this project interesting. I pers I already kind of I work in storage, so I find storage, or I work in computer storage, so I find it doing something with storage is kind of cool, and also learning a little bit of Linux is nice and that's what the Raspberry Pi platform offers it's a easy fun way to kind of learn a, a flavor of Linux with the uh, Raspbian OS it's also a uh, pretty cheap uh, you think a Raspberry Pi is almost a full it's almost as powerful as some laptops and you get them for just the chip for $35 and then also when it comes to providing cloud storage I mean, yes, Google Cloud is free, and there are some free services, but once you hit a certain point, those services start to cost monthly cost of subscription services. As noted down here, here's the Google subscription fees, and then there's these other ones. And then if you wanted to do like a personal, a lot of personal standalone NASs do offer online file transfers where you can log in through your phone, but these are 150 to 500 dollars and they don't even include the hard drive so they're a very expensive solution so here's my setup here's my pi uh, next cloud pi uh, my little fan case the two 64 gig samsung drives i have this hooked up through 
an Ethernet cable, I think it's always best to try to hardwire everything if you can. HDMI power and a keyboard. And the total cost of this setup was about $88. Um, as I mentioned, here's my cost list of supplies. Um, the, there's uh, different options you can do if you wanted to reduce cost even further or if you wanted to pursue this with larger storage, you can also do that instead of using these thumb drives. But this right here gives me, it's 264 gigs, I got it RAID 1 mirrored, so it's giving me about 64 gigs of usable storage. But if I lose one of these drives, I got a copy. The successes I had at the project was getting all the components together, getting a Resbian installed, initial setup, getting Apache 2 and the database working, which is pretty, getting the database side was pretty tricky. Uh, next cloud, getting next cloud set up, and uh, actually having files transfer transfer from my next cloud to Raspberry Pi successfully was nice getting that working cause, and uh, getting the RAID to work correctly it can be a little tricky. Failures I had. Well I had a couple failures. Uh, my first failure was with PHP. Um, the PHP I had installed with the Apache 2 server was not compatible anymore with the Nextcloud application or the version of Nextcloud that's available now. So I had to basically restart over because I was trying to figure out and reinstall different versions of PHP proved uh, difficult. So I eventually had to do some more research and had to do and uh, found I was using MySQL server as the database part and I switched it to MariaDB which uh, um, worked much better with the PHP versions and worked nicer with Nextcloud and then that's necessary for me to create the database. The second time I had to restart all the way over was I had syntax errors and the RAID configuration file and getting a RAID set up can be a little tricky because uh, you're doing everything through the command line and um, I also or I forget, I said permission issues. Um, when you move the, the um, with the RAID compile, when you move the database to the RAID, um, your RAID storage, um, you have to switch permissions with it. And I had trouble figuring that out, so I restarted back over. And then, I made it all the way through, and then my issue came across. I tried getting the outside network to work. Um, I had issues with permissions, and I think through the firewall, so I wasn't successful in getting the um, outside network to work, like getting it to work off my phone, which I know it's possible, but that was one of the issues I came across, and I didn't want to break it for the third time um, and one of the silly issues I had was this the keyboard I was just working directly off the Raspberry Pi using the keyboard and the keyboard had, didn't have a pipe so it's always better to enable SSH and just SSH. Alright lessons I learned. I learned some uh, Linux OS which is Raspbian's OS finds a flavor of Linux. I learned this first time me working with Apache server and any type of database so a little bit about MariaDB and SQL. The next cloud application I was not familiar with until this project. And it's always better to SSH from the desktop. Um, here's a video of me just kind of doing the configurations. The video is already compressed down four times to save time and sp speed it up twice to the YouTube video. And it just kind of goes through the various steps I had. Of course, this is my third go through, so I don't have all the um, mistakes in there, so it's a little bit faster. And basically, the reason why I kind of did this way, because if anybody wanted to follow this and create their own Nextcloud Raspberry Pi server, 
I could do so just from watching this. And I guess go through all the various steps. And we'll go through the whole process. Here's the new just configuring the uh, MariaDB database. You gotta switch permissions around and create your database user. Which this is very important because when you switch over to the next cloud, you have to give permissions to next cloud to access this database. So you have to have um, you have to create that user and create those passwords for it's all to sync up. And then to go along with this as almost a tutorial, I have a um, notepad link linked in here. Which I had to go through, and of course there are several different, there's tons of Raspberry Pi tutorials on all sorts of different projects. But for this project, there are a handful, but a lot of them have old data, and a lot of them have um, different usable parts. Just that I kind of had to figure out and piece together, obviously, for me restarting three times. And then I have it from like the very beginning uh, of installing Raspberry Pi, how to configure the Raspberry Pi and get the software running, enabling SSH, the default passwords in the Pi. And then, you know, I just have all the basic steps and then the pre-requests that you need to do, how to install NextCloud, how to install MySQL configurations, next cloud configurations when you get there, how to install the RAID software. And um, I compiled this for, it's on Notepad, so you can make it a little bit easier and just copy and paste over. Because some of this stuff is, it's easy to make syntax errors when you're typing in the command line. And also how to mount the RAID volume and what it should look like, how to do a key write in the VI editor. I kind of, I'm a little bit familiar with VI, but this helped me uh, get some practice working in the VI editor. So my first time logging in, this is what it looks like. Finally get logged in. It takes a little while to load because it you um, once you log in it downloads all the recommended apps and to log in it's the IP address that is on your your Raspberry Pi slash NextCloud and this is what that looks like when you first get in. And it has kind of like a basic setup of documents photos, you know, it gives you some of the basic folders. Uh, the important thing is right down here, you can see that it's my Raspberry Pi. It gives you the file path, which is the Raspberry Pi, so you know that it is working off there. Uh, I did a video up uh, picture test to see how fast, how much time it would take for pictures to get in there. So I selected photos plus new upload files. And this is me uploading files to the Pi to Nextcloud. And it's pretty quick. You know, I got all these three photos in here. No problem. And this is what the uh, what's supposed to happen. This is what the phone app looks like. What's supposed to happen 
when you check your phone and download the app. So I wanted to have a little demonstration of how that works, how to upload, how to run the app. You can choose how you want to upload Wi-Fi off only upload only when you're charging kind of how um, Google Photos or Dropbox would work but again this is a free and open source program you can use and put on any storage device you want to run so that concludes my project uh, um, I really hope that you know someone's interested and creating an ins inexpensive storage device for themselves, that they can take this tutorial and this presentation and be able to recreate this themselves. Uh, I do plan on purchasing some Rampberry Pi 4, all the powerful, and maybe some external SSDs and configuring this up myself because I'm kind of want a cheap storage solution instead of paying a bunch of money for a standalone NAS. And um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed my presentation. Thank you, and I hope everybody has a great summer.